This morning I'm speaking on the theme, contend for the faith, contend for the faith, contend for the faith, contend for the faith. Beloved in the Lord, we ought to understand the times we are in and what is going on all around us. Jude wrote uh, to believers, and I like the way he started. Jude is just one chapter, only one chapter, and it's the book before Revelation. And I like his salutation because of the way he wrote it. And I will read from verse 1, and then I will read 3 and 4. Hallelujah. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James. To those who have been called, who are loved in God, the Father, and kept for Jesus Christ. Dear friends, verse 3. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. Hallelujah. For certain individuals whose condemnation was written long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. Hallelujah. In the coming weeks, I may really do a lot more on this. But today, beloved in the Lord, in the first verse, Bible says that Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James, and he wrote to who? To those who have been called, who are loved in God, the Father, and kept for Jesus Christ. So I am not going to speak to, if I'm saying contend for the faith, I am not talking about unbelievers. I'm talking about believers, and this morning I'm speaking to believers. Hallelujah. We need to understand because many of us, we, I think, we, we, I don't know, but we always want to hear something that will really um, make us probably go for a call or something. But we need to grow as Christians. We cannot be babies all the time. We need to grow. And we need certain things, certain scriptures, certain things that God has spoken uh, in his word, we need them. They are food for our soul. And we need these words so we can grow and we can stand and we can contend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, he started by addressing the people. He's really speaking to a certain kind of people. And he says that, don't go ahead of me. He says that, he is speaking to those who have been called, who are loved in God. Hallelujah. We are loved in God, beloved in the Lord. We are loved in God. And we are kept for Jesus Christ. And these are the people, people whose mindset, whose hearts are all for Jesus Christ. That's what we're supposed to be. And that is the people Jude addressed this letter to. Hallelujah. Now, then he goes to verse 3, and he says that, Dear friends, friends in the faith, friends who really sit in church together, friends that he probably never saw, like me and you, but he's writing to all of us because he's writing to those who were at the time that he was writing the letter, they were believers. 
and those who will come later to believe. Hallelujah. Like us. So he addresses us as his own brothers. Hallelujah. Hmm. Beloved in the Lord, this is interesting. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, the reason we are friends and brothers and sisters and everything that he was talking about, the reason is that we share in the same salvation. You know, the salvation that we share as we sit here this morning, there is not a different salvation. There is not a different blood to save the white, the black, the green, the yellow, or maybe in Ghana, the Fantis, the Airways, the Gans, the whatever. I mean, or maybe the doctors, the lawyers, and then the masons and the laborers. There is, look, it is the same blood. There is no difference. Hallelujah. So the same blood that saved whosoever, who became bishop and uh, apostle and whatever, it's the same blood that saved all of us. So we are all together. Hallelujah. I said we are what? And we share in a common salvation. What we share is the same. We don't share somebody's salvation being different from someone else's. No, it's the same blood that saved you. The same blood that saved me and the same blood that saved us all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what he wanted to write about. That's what he, as a preacher, there are times you want, you have prayed, you feel and you know that the Spirit of God is leading you to speak on a topic. And then the last hour, the Holy Spirit will say, no, I don't want you to speak on that topic. This is what I want you to speak on. And you have no option than to obey. Hallelujah. So he had a plan. It wasn't like he just got up and then was writing. He had a plan. He knew what he wanted to write. He has thought about it. Hallelujah. He has studied on the topic. And he knew what he was going to write. But he says that, I felt compelled to write and urge you on something else. Though I had a plan, though I wanted to come to you and speak on this topic, however, when I was ready and when I was about to write, I was compelled to write on another topic. Hallelujah. Can you give me the King James as well? Because I'll come back to NIV, but don't worry. I just want to read this. He says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence, I gave what? All diligence. I planned. I prepared. I really prepared myself to preach to you or to write to you on this topic. Hallelujah. I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. It was needful for me to write unto you and exalt you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me carefully. Go back to NIV. Although, although my intention, I was so eager to write to you about the salvation we share. Although that's what I plan to do. Although that's what I wanted to tell you. Although that, that is what I really came here to tell you. But Jude is saying that I was rather compelled. Compelled means forced, constrained, or obliged. He was now, he, he had a plan. But there was a spirit of God really pushing him that, no, 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 no. Don't tell them about that. They know it already. But 
teach them, write to them how they can stand and fight for that faith. You see, sometimes we come back and give you the same thing all over again. But we need to grow so we can stand and fight. Hallelujah. Because many of us are not fighting. Many of us, everything goes. Hallelujah. But I will tell you certain things that will make you understand that you ought to stand up and fight the good fight. We have allowed everything to be preached to us. Everything. People tell us everything. We can't even stand. You see, we, we have allowed, last, last Sunday I was telling you about mockers. We sit in the place of mockers. And people, mockers are mocking us. Scoffers are scoffing. Look, the problem is that we are unable to defend the faith. We are unable to defend our faith. Somebody is saying some evil things. And he's saying that, what can your God do? Your God that doesn't even give you food to eat. That's why you are a beggar. And we are unable to stand and confess it that Jesus said that I will feed you. And we are unable to tell them that our God is able to feed 5,000 people with only a few loaves and few fishes. We are unable to say that because we are going to them to beg. It breaks my heart. That we do things contrary to the scripture. Bible says that the psalmist said, I was young, but now I am old. But I have never seen the righteous or his descendants go around begging for food. But we are begging all the time. Unfortunately, we don't even ask our fellow believers. We are going to unbelievers. And we have every, every, every reason to now even condemn our own people. Even though we haven't asked them, we begin to condemn them. Hallelujah. We are not contending for the faith. We are not standing in to fight. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you this evening, uh, this morning, that watch it closely. Beloved in the Lord. He had something to say. Although he had planned, although he has purposed to come and say something else, the Holy Spirit said, no, 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 don't write that. Write this one. And he said that I, am, I was what? I felt compelled. You know, when you are compelled to do something, even when you don't want to do it, you have to do it. Hallelujah. So he was compelled, he felt compelled to write on a topic. Maybe he wasn't too excited to write about that topic. You, you know, there are some times you don't want to preach on some subjects. But you are compelled under the circumstance to speak about it. Hallelujah. Maybe there are topics when you speak, people leave your church. So you decide that even when the Holy Spirit is compelling, you say, no, 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 I won't talk about this one. Because when I talk about this one, people will get angry. Hallelujah. You cannot even contend for the faith as a preacher to preach the gospel that will change lives. What else do you want to preach? Hallelujah. We are not sensitive to the Holy Spirit. We, because we studied and we just decided this is what we want to talk about, that's what. No, that's not what he did. You know, there are times you plan to do something, but the Holy Spirit will ask you, no, do this one. Are we sensitive enough to the promptings of the Holy Spirit as Christians to obey him and change our plans? We will never have heard this if he was not willing to change his plan. He had a plan. He had a sermon. He knew what he was going to do. And that's why he says, although I was very eager, none will pray no. He was eager to write because, you know, there are times you have studied, you have prepared, so you are eager to speak on, it, on something. And the Holy Spirit said, no, 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 that's not what I want. And you never know why he wants you to do what he wants you to do. But you see, it's not every time you have to know. You have to obey him. So he obeyed. My question is that, why is he telling us what his original plans was? Where? Why? 
So that we will also learn that there will be times we just want to do something else, but he's asking us to do something which is very different from what we wanted to do. He was going to talk to them about salvation. The salvation we all share. How good it is. How Jesus died and, 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 uh, and, uh, on the cross for us so we can be reconciled to God and all that. He was willing to write about our common faith. The faith that we all share. Hallelujah. The salvation that we all share. But then, the Holy Spirit changed everything. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may not be, be prepared for certain things, but the Holy Spirit will change your plan. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved in the Lord. What was it that the Holy Spirit wanted us to know? What was it? He had a plan, but the Holy Spirit changed the plan. But what is it that the Holy Spirit wanted us to know? The Holy Spirit wanted him to write and urge us. Hallelujah. I said to write and to urge us. Hallelujah. King James says that, that we should diligently or earnestly contend. Hallelujah. Amen. We should do what? Earnestly contend for the faith for which was once delivered unto the saints. We have to contend. We have to stand for it. We give up too easily. And he's saying that, no, don't give up too easily. Look, the reason, do you know why we give up too easily? We don't know the word. So anybody comes and tell us anything, and whatever we have studied in the word, whatever the Holy Spirit has taught us, whatever we have learned in Bible study, whatever, we just let it go. Because someone is telling us a story that is too good to let go. Hallelujah. And he's saying that, look, we ought to begin to stand up and contend for the faith that was once delivered to us. Hallelujah. Are we ready? Are we ready to stand up and contend for that faith? Are we ready to fight for what we believe in? Are we ready? If we say we are Christians, are we ready to rise up? And I'm not saying go and take a gun and, or anything. We need to use... You see, we, we have to understand that contending is not just going to fight, but it's striving to stand for the truth. Once this is what the Lord is giving to us, once this is what the Holy Spirit wanted us to know, we need to really stand... And contend, hallelujah, and do what? Struggle to make it work. Look, the word contention or contend means to strive, to strive. It is not an easy job. It is not an easy battle. But we need to do what? We need to strive. It is not something that you're going to do. Yeah, no. We ought to really be strong. And, and because before you can do that, you know what you are doing. Before you can do that, you know that you are equipped by the Holy Spirit. Before you can do that, that is why, you see, the believers, those, the disciples of Jesus Christ, do you realize that in the early days, they couldn't contend for the faith? They were, they were just small things. Even when Jesus was going to be crucified, and they said, then Peter was, hey, no, 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 hey, me, hey, me, me. And they said, even your, your speech, your voice, your, your ascent even gives you up. He said, no, 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 don't talk about that. Me, I don't know him. He couldn't contend. He couldn't stand. Hallelujah. Because he was afraid. But when he was empowered and equipped by the Holy Spirit, he stood before the Sanhedrin. This, you see, the first time, it wasn't the, the, the leaders. 
It was just the servants and the security people. And they were the ones who said that. The Bible even says it was a small girl. Who said, no, you. You are one of them. I said, me? One of who? Me? One of who? You are one? No, 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 no. Please. Please, don't bring that here. Then he found a way to go and stand at another place. Then, no, you. Then he goes like, no, 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 no. Then he began to curse. Say all kinds of things. Oh, you see, sometimes, me doña me. Hallelujah. I swear by God, I don't know this man. Hey! The man that you had followed, the man that not too long ago, you said, wherever you go, I'll go with you. Even I will die in your place. Hey! Many of us, we are in church. Oh. We come to church. We are here. We are doing But when we get out and somebody says that, you, you Christians, he said, what, what Christians? What, what, what Christians are you talking about? What, what Christians are you talking about? Hey, you know, there are times somebody, <clears throat> this one is hard, but I'll see. <laughs> Hallelujah. So money, money has come and they are sharing. You know it's corrupt money. You know it's corrupt money. And then when they go to your turn, they say, Oh, look at the Christian, you won't pay. You, you are a Christian, this money, you don't know. Right, we'll be Christian here. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We can't stand. Yeah, we see, because we saw money. <laughs> when, 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 who told you that I'm a Christian? Uh, but you, you're always holding the Bible. Uh, but Bible is a book. <laughs> Hallelujah. We say all kinds of things. Hallelujah. We say everything. We, you know, the problem is that we can't stand. We can't. Is that not what is happening? Is that not what is happening? Because we are unable to stand. Even some pastors can't stand. You always want me to talk about pastors. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> you see, it reminds you of yesterday. You see, it reminds you of yesterday. What you said. You need to repent this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Oxford Dictionary says that uh, um, um, contend means struggle to surmount a difficulty or compete with others in a struggle to achieve something. And in this case, to really to, uh, to, to co compete for our faith. We need to stand. We need to really, you see, people are saying things against us. They are saying all kinds of things. They are just rubbishing us. But we need to stand, whether rain or shine. Hallelujah. We need to be able to be bold and say that regardless of, even if I'm hungry, I'll stand. Because I know the one I have believed in. Many of us, we don't even know the one that we believed in. We don't know that God is our provider. So this little thing, yeah, but if I don't do this, how, what, can I, what can I eat? How can I make money? Me, I need money. You see, uh, me, I, I want money. Yes, I know you want money. But who is your source? Who is your source? Who is the, who is the one who owns all the gold and the silver? If you know him, and if he's the one you are serving, you know that you will never beg. He knows how to provide for his own. Yeah, but you see, me, I've prayed, I've not seen anything. When you were praying, how were you living your life? Ask yourself first, were you obeying him? Hallelujah. And what were you even praying for? The thing you were asking for, what are you going to use it for? Do you have any plan in your mind that what I'm praying for, I'm going to use it to honor him. Is that what you think? 
And you have forgotten. You see, the reason we pray like that and we speak like that, the reason we can't contend is we don't know the word. We don't know. So we don't even know that if we pray anyhow and it's not according to his will, he will not answer. We don't know that. We don't know that if we pray for things that we want to spend on our own pleasure, God says that I won't give it to you. He says, you ask and you do not receive. Why? Because you ask to really satisfy your own pleasures. So I'm not giving to you. Look, the point is that the thing is in his hand. He decides. Hallelujah. You can pray from morning to evening. Fast from morning to evening. Do whatever you want for the wrong reasons. Nothing will happen. Change the way you fast. I said do what? Change the way you fast. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, 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 um, um, this morning, the Bible is saying that we have to stand and fight the good fight. We have to stand and fight. Contending for the faith is a good fight. I said contending for the faith is a good fight. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 12a. Hallelujah. Bible says that fight the good fight of the fight the good fight of it is not you get taking a gun and going to kill anybody. It is you standing for the truth. The faith that is being spoken of here is the truth of the gospel. Let us rise up. You know some people are even twisting scripture. Hallelujah. You need to be bold to stand up. Hallelujah. Unfortunately, many of us don't want to stand up. Bible says that in, in Matthew chapter 11 verse 12. Can you put, quickly put it there? Hallelujah. From the days of John the Baptist until now. The kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence. And the violent people have been raiding it. We need to be violent. Violent not with guns, but violent in our way of standing true for the faith. Like when somebody spoke to Peter, then Peter would go like, no, 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 no. I know him. He is my Lord. He is my Savior. That's what he wants. But you see, because they were not empowered enough, when Jesus had died... Now they call them to the Sanhedrin. Come and see Peter contending for the faith. The same, the, 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 this time it's not the servants. This time it's not the security people. It's the top brass of the Sanhedrin. They questioned him. He stood before them and he asked them, what you are saying and what God is saying, which one do you think I should follow? He was able to stand up to them. He, they, they said, we'll beat you. Yes, go ahead. They beat them. They gave them the 40 minus 1 lashes. And that la when you take it, part of your skin go away. Because it's not easy. 39. 39 with, with in Ghana we we'll say it is the uh, horse's tail. Hallelujah. But the, the, it was twice that you, you had bottles, you had metals, and they, when they give you one, the blood that will come out, but they took it. After that, after that, they went straight to the street and began to preach the gospel. They were not afraid. They now are able to stand. These are the people we call as contending for the faith. It didn't matter what they told them. It didn't matter what they did to them. They stood true and they stood for the faith. Today, the very thing, the, the things that even don't make us come to church. Sometimes I am so sad and I ask myself, when I pray, I ask God, God, so these people Give them the air to breathe. The people that are speaking that, but if I don't do this, if I don't do that, what will I eat? What will I drink? Lord, I please, I'm begging you, don't kill them, but stop air. 
Hallelujah. Stop the air. Or put meter for them. For them alone, give them meters. Even the electricity bill, they can't pay. How much more can you pay for the air you breathe? Hallelujah. That's, you see, so when people are doing that, they can't stand for the faith, and then they will say all kinds of things. I just, I just said, God, forgive them. But teach them one lesson, one. Only one lesson. Just let them see. Let, you see, let, eh, 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 eh. You don't take anything from them. Don't take their dress. Don't take their Indian hair. Don't take their Peruvian nose. Hallelujah. Don't take their Spanish bottles. Don't take. Hallelujah. Don't take any of that. You don't take. They are Ghanaians, but they want to be. Don't take. Just leave them. Hallelujah. What else do you want? Or what else do you have that I haven't mentioned? Italian what? Huh? What? Ah, ah, yes. Ah, they say Italian lashes. Hallelujah. Lord, don't take any of that. Please, I'm begging you. Don't take any of that. Let them enjoy it. But stop the air and let's see whether the Italian lash. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's see whether that will save them. Hallelujah. Beloved, we haven't come to understand who we have believed in. We don't understand the faith that we have come into. We don't. That's why we are not able to contend for it. So we have allowed mockers to mock us. The Bible says that in the last days, there will be scoffers. There are many things I'm going to show you next week. But let me finish today. Hallelujah. There are people that have to stand up for the truth in these last days. We need to stand up. We need to be a little bit, I mean, I, 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 don't, know, I don't know how to say it. But we, we, we have to be a little bit violent. We have to really be bold and stand for the truth. The truth hurts. I know. I know. Look, the worst part is even your own brother Christian, when you try to stand for the truth, do you know what they tell you? But are you the only Christian? You, even you, when you, you came, you came only like one year ago. Do you know how long I've been a Christian? I was born into it. And so what? You were born into it and you can't stand for anything. Hallelujah. What have you believed in? Being born into it is more dangerous. Because people are born into it. They don't believe in anything. When you say, you say, oh, yeah, you see, my mother took me to children's service. And so what? Hallelujah. And so what? And you can't stand for anything. You can't contend for any truth. You are just walking around. Hallelujah. I said, that's the most painful part. When your own brothers and sisters are asking you, are you the only Christian in town? Hallelujah. When they put something that you know for sure that this is not in line with the word of God and you tell them, oh brother, but if you go for evangelism and somebody knows you and he knows you've been putting this there and you go and tell him something, what do you think the person is going to say? Oh, but you, everybody knows that this is what is uh, trending. Hey, trending doesn't take anybody to heaven. No. What is trending does not take anyone to heaven. Look, we have really gone too low. We have gone too low. Beloved, the time that you were posting and, yeah, oh, but me, I saw on somebody's own. So you spent time to go to unbelievers, uh, are there any friends there? Satos, and post or whatever. And then you check out, then you see one that everybody is laughing, even when it is mocking Jesus or Christians, then you come and put it there. 
Hallelujah. And you want your pastor to read. Or you want your pastor to watch. And your friends. And then the next day, you want to tell your friends about Jesus. But they look at you. Do you know? They laugh at you. If you don't know, they laugh at you. <laughs> when, the moment you leave, they say, <laughs> is this one too a Christian? This one. Th- this one too. Beloved, what are you standing for? What are you contending for? If you can contend for the faith, you have to begin to live a certain kind of life. Because if you don't, you can't contend for the faith. Hallelujah. The people of the world have really prepared how they should face us. But we do not know how we can face them. We are never prepared. They gather. They plan. They scheme. Put stuff together. And then, unfortunately, do you know, the, 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 the most intriguing thing is that today, Christians are not even studying so they will know the truth. So they allow an unbeliever to take a scripture and twist it. And then say that your Bible is even not telling you the truth. And they say all kinds of things. And Christians, we go to these websites and we look for things that really are written by unbelievers who do not have the spirit of God to understand what the spirit is saying to the church. Hallelujah. And they are now telling us what they want us to hear. So instead of you, a believer, standing to it and saying that no way, this is not true. We are unable to. Now we go like, yeah, but me, I'm confused though. Last time I read this, who said read that thing? Of all the Bible that is there, you haven't finished reading it. It's unbelievers' commentary that you are reading. There are many, look, there is uh, Matthew Henry, there is uh, David Guzit, there is uh, Dr. Um, I can go on and on and on. How many commentaries? You haven't even had any one of them to read. It's the devil's commentary you want to read. It is people who do not know Christ and sit down only to look for things that in their own mind, they are so confused, they don't understand. Listen to me. Bible says that anything that you say, he says it is the spirit in that person that can understand what the person is saying. So if you want to understand the word of God, you have to go to the spirit of God. You don't go to an unbeliever who has the spirit of the devil. Hallelujah. And they are twisting things and we don't even know. And we are believing everything. We can't stand for the truth. We can't contend for our own faith. Hallelujah. Beloved, I want you to stand up and contend for the faith. Hallelujah. Are we ready to stand for the truth? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to 1 Timothy 4, 6. Mm. It's so unfortunate. I want you to understand this. People... Do, <laughs> this one. Everybody can wear. In the same way. This one. You know this one. Everybody can wear. It's sold in the bookshop. If you go there, you can get. So everybody is wearing. Uh, You don't know this thing. (laughs) Hallelujah. That white thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's called collar, collar, collar. Not the one when your neck breaks, you put there. This one, it's a clerical collar. Yes. Uh, uh, Hallelujah. 
When I say it, I have to say hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. But everybody can wear it. And everybody is wearing it. And unfortunately, there is a deficit in the church now. And it breaks my heart. Now, many of us, when we are contending for the truth, because some pastors are lying, you see your face. I'll say it again. Some pastors are lying. Some pastors are twisting things to make name for themselves and all kinds of things. Because that is going on, and I'm not afraid to say, because that is going on, we are unable to point out these things to them. Because, listen, do you know why many of us, if you say, hey, even you, when I said it, you are looking at me with some face. Yeah, but Christians, Christians are always fighting amongst themselves. Christians, you see, one Christian will say this, and one Christian will condemn it. And one Christian, hey, please, don't be one of them. I said don't do what? Bible says do what? It says what? You will be... So if somebody is giving a bad teaching, I said if somebody is giving a bad teaching, yeah, but why, so why are you angry? I said, why are you angry? <laughs> I said, why are you angry if I'm saying it? Let's go to verse 1. Of that scripture. <laughs> the spirit clearly says that in the latter time, later times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things. Hallelujah. I said some people are teaching things. So demons are teaching. Which one are you following? I said, if we won't say demon, it teach it. Now, cast away and ya. That's a critical for. You see, if we don't really stand up for the truth, we can never advance the gospel. So today, many people, when you tell them the truth, say, oh no, no, that one is too hard. If every pastor is saying the truth, is it from one Bible? Hallelujah. If they run from one place, they'll go and meet it at another place. Hallelujah. Bible calls some of them hypocritical liars. Hallelujah. <laughs> let, let, look, let me, let me I, I, want to, I want to end because I know you, 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 now where I'm going, you don't want. I will continue next week. That's why you have refreshed. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me take you somewhere. You see, I want you to understand that in the Bible, do you know that Peter was the head of the apostles? But Paul stood up against him. Let's go to Galatians. I'll show you right now. Galatians chapter 2 verse 11. We'll read to 14. When Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face. Today, listen, Paul was small. I said Paul was Peter was Let some big pastor say something. And a small fish said the truth. You will see. You, this small pastor that you have come, you don't respect. You, you, don't, you don't respect. Which school did you go to? Hallelujah. I have none. <laughs> Nobody knows me. Hallelujah. When Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. I know you don't like, but I'll say it. 
For before certain men came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they arrived, he began to draw back and separate himself from the Gentiles because he was afraid. I said, listen to me. Peter can be afraid. You know him. Small guys were talking to him. He was running away. Peter can be afraid. So Peter was afraid of, to offend the fellow Jews who had come. So he knew the truth. Wasn't he the one God sent to Cornelius? Didn't he eat with them? Why is it that now he's running away? If they are saying things that are not true, tell them. If I say something that is not true, be bold and tell me. Break the scripture and show me and tell me. Because if you don't do that, I will lead you to hell. That is the truth. Because if you know what I'm teaching, it's not the truth of scripture, it will not lead you to heaven. And therefore, you have to be bold so that I don't lead others astray. Look, if we don't stand for the truth, and today, yeah, but you, you see, eh, you are not, you see, eh, that is why, you see, people don't go to church because Christians, they are fighting against one. If people are telling, the, they are telling lies, what do you have to do? Hallelujah. Me, this is not me, it's Bible. Hallelujah. Okay, let's move on. The other Jews joined him in his hypocrisy. <laughs> so that by their hypocrisy, even Barnabas was led astray. Hallelujah. Paul was with Barnabas. But Barnabas, because of what he saw Peter doing and the other Jews doing, he was being led astray. Look, the things you are following. I tell you, beloved in the Lord, I'm not afraid. But I'm telling you the truth. Pastors are leading people astray. And read your Bible. It says in the end times it will happen. It will happen. Next week, I will go into it. I will show you in the scripture. I will show you. I will open the Bible to you. And I will show you what the Bible says. The end times, what is going to happen. People are pastors for their stomach. I said people are pastors for their stomach. If we don't tell them. If you see, they are asking you, pay this, pay this, pay this. Look, let me tell you, it is not wrong to give to God. But when... It is going in a certain direction. It is called extortion. That is the English word for it. It is called extortion. Be bold. Don't pay. Hallelujah. Let's move on. When I saw that, they were not acting in line with the truth of the gospel. If people are not acting in line with the truth of the gospel, don't shut up. Speak up. Contend for the faith. That's what we need to do. We need to rise up and contend for the faith. We don't have to be afraid. Some of us will go to prison. It doesn't really matter. Hallelujah. Paul was in prison, but he was still writing. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed to stand for the truth. I said, don't be ashamed to stand for the truth. People may not like you. If people are in your church, you see them. Doing what is wrong. Tell them. If you don't tell them, the Bible says, I will ask their blood from you. I don't want any blood on my head. So if I see, I will tell you. If you like, go. If you like, and you keep staying, I will keep saying. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I can't keep you. The only thing I can do is to tell you. And I'll keep telling you. Hallelujah. If you don't stop, and you end up in hell, God will not ask me. I said, God will not ask me. I said to Cephas, in front of them all, you see, come, 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 Peter, I'm poor, this is Peter, <laughs> hallelujah. You see, Hallelujah. Amen. Bible says that. 
<laughs> I said to Cephas in front of them all, you are a Jew, yet you live like a Gentile and not like a Jew. How is it then that you force Gentiles to follow Jewish customs? Huh? Hmm? Yeah. They will leave. Okay. Did Peter leave? Okay, he stayed. So if you, if you are told the truth and you want to leave... The, 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 the usher is there. He will open the door for you. You can sit down. Hallelujah. You say, is, did you hear that? Wide open. But she says she doesn't understand English. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Broad gates are like that. You see, people don't want the narrow gate because on the narrow, on, on, you know, the narrow road leads to the narrow gate. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how many times I have to really show you this. On that road, I said on that road, come, come, come. You two come. Your shoe is long. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's called high heels. Hallelujah. Amen. So, on, this, is, this is the narrow road. You see, narrow. So, in, because it's narrow, like, he's pushing me. This one is pushing me. I want to go. But, I, you see, and they're pushing me. And I'll step on her leg. And then she will fall. When she falls, she had to leave her. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Bible says that you may fall how many times? <laughs> Lie down and die. <laughs> Do what? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, on the narrow road, you will fall. Because the road is narrow. You see... This morning, yeah, let's go, let's go, narrow, 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 narrow. But I want to spit, what will I do? <laughs> I will spit on him. So on the narrow road, some people will spit on you, hallelujah. But it doesn't mean that, oh, yeah, because they spat on me, I'm not going to go on that road. Let me go on the, wide, wide, the, the, the Broadway, 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 Broadway. I can spit. I can even do that thing. Hallelujah. But the point I'm trying to make is that on the narrow road, things will happen. Uh, Hallelujah. Because it's narrow. So people will say things to you and you will not be happy. But stand for the truth and keep going. I said stand for the truth. Contend for the faith. You can sit down. Contend for the faith. Jesus was not afraid to tell the Sanhedrin. If, listen, if there was any time in, 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 in the world where there was so much contention in the, in the temple, it was Jesus and the Pharisees. Hallelujah. So if Jesus was proud to do that, we have to do it. We have to be able. Because he saw the Pharisees were leading the people astray. You know what Jesus said? He once said that. He said, you see, you people, you travel land and sea to win one convert. And after you have brought him, you make him twice a candidate of hell like yourself. So Jesus was telling the Pharisees straight away that you people, you are going to hell. Today, even somebody who came to church today, if I say that, are you judging me? Who, who are you to judge me? Who are you to, is the Bible saying it too? I didn't say anything. Me, I'm quoting from the Bible. If the Bible judges you, that's what the Bible says it will do. Hallelujah. Oh, you didn't know that. Hallelujah. What does the Bible say? Can you give me Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12? What does the Bible say? What am I, let's look quickly. For the word of God is sharper than it penetrates Hey, it does what? So if I speak the word of God and it judges your thoughts and your attitudes, did I do anything wrong? What did I do? I spoke the truth. So if you say I am judging you, beloved, listen to me. I don't judge no one. Hallelujah. You know, I can post. Hallelujah. You see, I love this book so much that I can post with it. Because I love it. You see, I'm so proud to have it. Hallelujah. I, I, I am so proud to really sit down 
and then just open my eyes and read and study and ask God, reveal mysteries to me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I love it. Hallelujah. Amen. It says it judges. So it is the word of God that is judging your thoughts and the attitudes of your heart. It's not me. If you get offended, you are getting offended at God. Because in the beginning, and the word, and the word was. So this is the word, and this is God. And if God decides to judge your attitude, don't come and ask me. Hallelujah. I didn't do anything. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Jesus was so, it got to a point. He called them whitewashed tombs. He called them, you know, Jesus was so bold when he, when he had to really speak to the Pharisees. He was not afraid. Why are we afraid? Hallelujah. I said, Paul was not afraid to stand up to Peter. In 2 Peter chapter 3, do you realize that Peter commended Paul? Let, let me end by, by reading that to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, I want you to study the word. I want you to know the truth. Because next week I'm going to tell you why we are where we are today. Hallelujah. Amen. I said I want to do what? Yeah, because many of us don't know why we are where we are today. Let me read that to you. This is Peter. This is Peter. Peter writing. <laughs> and I'm going to read to you. Let's read from Second Peter chapter 3. We are reading from verse 4 to 16. Chapter 14 to 16, sorry. Chapter 14. <clears throat> So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found, to be found. Hallelujah. Spotless. Are we spotless? Are we blameless? Let's move on. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote, uh, wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. Now listen. He writes the same way in all his letters. Some people say, oh, you, you preach one way. Go and tell Paul. If you finish with Paul, come to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. He writes the same way in all his letters. Speaking in them of these matters. His letters, listen carefully. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand. Which ignorant and unstable, oh my goodness. Ignorant and unstable people distort as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. Try and distort scripture so that you can sin, you can commit the sin you want. So you twist the scripture, you distort it to suit you. But Bible says that you are doing that to your own destruction. Hallelujah. But this is Peter. Who Paul, you, you read in Galatians what he did to him. But now Peter is now commending Paul. He says, you don't understand the guy. Me, I understood him. When he spoke to me, I repented. So me, I understand him. He, the things he says, they are hard. He says, the things he writes, hallelujah, they are what? Hard to understand. But for me, he didn't write to me. He stood in my face and told me things that were hard to take. But I took and I repented. Beloved, may the Lord cause your heart to receive this word and repent. May the Lord our God cause you to change your mindset. May you begin to contend for the truth. May you begin to stand up and fight for the truth. Because there, we are in very dangerous times where people are twisting things and distorting things here and there. But beloved in the Lord, if you don't stand for the truth, 
you are doing that to your own distraction. If you, don't, if you cannot contend for the truth, beloved, contending for the truth is going to help you yourself, it's going to help your neighbor. Because many people are confused because they don't know the truth. Today, if you tell a Christian, study your Bible, he says, I don't have time. How can you, listen to me carefully, how can you decide that you will go from here to my house, which you don't know, but you refuse, I sent you my address. I sent you my what? And you refuse to use the address, yet you want to come to my house. Where do you think you will end up? God gave you his GPS. I said, God did what? He gave you his GPS. And he said, this is what will lead you to heaven. This is the GPS. And he sent you his location. And God said that, this is what you can use to get to me. You say, I don't want this one. I want something some, somebody in some corner is saying. Hallelujah. Where, where are you going to end? There is only one truth. I said there is only one what? There is only one GPS that will lead you to that destination. The coordinates are clear. They are all here. Very simple coordinates. Hallelujah. Longitude, latitude. They're all here. The coordinates are there. You say, God, I don't want to use your coordinates, but I want to get to you. You will get to hell. Hallelujah. These coordinates will take you to heaven. If you close it and throw it away and you begin to drive, you end up in hell. 